so we continue the, um, our, our reading of Bhagavad Gita, a very slow reading. I hope that uh, doesn't bother you. There's so much to say about so few verses. So we're going quite slowly, but I think that's very nice. I hope you agree that that's a very nice way to do. And we're, we're just to repeat, we're, we're following the, the, the inspiration of Gurudev and his reading of Bhagavad Gita in the Prabhupada edition. And I think we're, at least personally speaking, now I'm not speaking for Gurudev, but I'm speaking for myself when I say that we're guided by um, four principles, four ideas, basic ideas. The one is that, the first is that um, prema, divine love, is the fundamental reality of the universe. It's the, it's the beginning and the end of everything. And the second idea is that the highest manifestation of uh, prema is the loving relation of Radha Mohan. And then the third idea is that from our point of view as jivas, as individual souls, the greatest undertaking, the greatest thing that we can do is to devote ourselves to serving in our hearts, in our spiritual lives, uh, Radhika, the goddess of divine love. And the fourth idea is that the best way to do that, the only way to do that, is by adopting the mood of the maidservant of the goddess of divine love. So, Manjari Bhav. Radha Udavaji, no other Charan is there. Maybe you can do a Russian translation. Okay. Is that okay with you, Radha? Yes, yes, yes. Dandavat Pranam to all to you, Dho Prabhu. Yes, I can translate if you if it will be okay. recognized. On the way, thank you. Oh, my. Oh. And blast off. Okay, should be all right now. So those are the four basic ideas, and that and these well, four basic ideas. base di queste quattro idee. Oop, wait a minute, you fell out of interpretation, my dear. Ma oh. dear uh, okay. My fault, I'm sure. One moment. English. But I liked your translation, what I heard. Update. Okay, now Madhuri Rasa. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you. So starting from these four ideas, we're rereading Bhagavad Gita. With, uh, as uh, Seva to Gurudev, and with inspiration from Gurudev, and we understand it, uh, I understand it, as an introduction to bhakti. And in that sense, it's a kind of preparation. It's the introduction to the story of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, in when, 1486. So by reading Bhagavad Gita, we want to come deeper, we want to go deeper in our understanding of divine love, prema. We want to go deeper in our understanding of the relation between Krishna and uh, Radharani. And most important, we want to let ourselves be inspired by finding that divine love is everywhere present in Bhagavad Gita, that Radha is there as the energy of divine love. And I think there's lots and lots of good evidence for that. And it's when we read it with that 
eye, or as we say in French, with that hat on, then, um, then we have a very, very beautiful reading of Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita goes from being a great book to being a wonderful book. So, prema, we sometimes think, oh, that means love, divine love. But what we, what we find out when we look at the way that it plays in Bhagavad Gita is that it's not simply an emotion. It's not like anger or fear or sadness or happiness. Prema is much more than that. So it's not a label for something. It's not something we can have or have not. Remember, we talked earlier about envy being, envy is the confusion of having and being. This is important for understanding prema because prema is not something we, we have. It's not something we just give or take like a like a piece of bread. Prema is action. Prema, prema is a way of acting. It's not love, but loving, loving relation. Yeah. We don't have it. We don't own it. We live it. We live it with others. We give it to others as an action, not as a thing, not as an object. So our dear Gurudev teaches us, has taught us for many, many years about love in action. This is the way we understand prema. So it's not something we can buy at the prema shop. We can't buy prema on Amazon, as Gurudev says, likes to say. It's not a prema relation. But it is a relation. It's a relation with others. It's a relation with others who are, who are also living and loving. It's a relation with, above all, Guru, but it's also a relation with other, other jivas, other human beings who are seeking just like we are. And of course, it's a, it's a relation to, to God, an active, living one. So what we find out in, in our tradition, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, in general, is that the Leela, the loving Leela of Dharad Mohan, is going on and on and on. It's not just, I love you, stop, goodbye. It's a loving relationship which never stops. It goes through different phases, different forms, different feelings, different times of day, different times of, types of, times of action. But it's always ongoing and it's a loving it's not something fixed in love. It's a loving relation between uh, Mohan and Radha that never, never stops. And this is the model for our lives as well. The loving relation never stops. It's not something we can fix and put on our shelf. It's not something, a badge we can put on our uniform. It's not something we can write down in a book. It never stops. That's kind of the introduction, I think, to today. And then what we started talking about last time was the personality of Godhead, about Krishna's personality. And I spent the week really thinking about this, and, and I, I thought a lot more. I found I've discovered a lot more things about this, in, at least in my meditation. So I want to take some time and share this with you, and I hope, I hope you, that's, that, that helps you. As you know, in, in all of his writings, Prabhupada uses the term personality of Godhead. Now, I haven't read everything uh, in this literature, but I think he's quite unique in doing that. There are not too many others who talk, except for his disciples, who talk about personality of Godhead. When he, talk, when he talks about personality of Godhead, we know he's talking about Krishna. Krishna has a personality. Krishna has a very special, unique nature. 
And it's a personality, like any personality, that's changing. It's not an absolute, it's not fixed. So what I've been meditating this week is, what does that mean? What does it mean to say that God has a personality? Hmm. Now back in the last verse, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, verse 4, we talked about the expansion of Krishna through his different kinds of energies. And the very last line of the, the very last part of verse 4 said, well, just because Krishna is everywhere, don't think that he doesn't have a personality. In other words, Krishna creates everything, makes all the structures and aspects of the, of the universe, every little bit, uniformly, perfectly, absolutely. There's nothing that can or should change. And yet, Krishna has a personality within it something that is changing according to different moods and situations. So this is the two sides of the, let's say, the, the, the aspect of, of Krishna that we have to try to understand. And it's brought up many times two weeks ago. Uh, uh, Garachandra talked about God being multiple and the same at one time, and that kind of paradox. And here we have another kind of paradox. That Krishna is everywhere the same, but he has a personality. So I wanted to try to think about this together with you. Think about what that means. And I think the starting point is something uh, we talked about briefly before. And that is the, the three aspects of God in Vedic literature. So most would say that God contains these three aspects in, in different ways. And you've heard of them all. I mentioned them before too. The first one is Paramatma. So Prabhupada translates this as super soul. So God is a soul. And he's the soul of all souls. The biggest soul, the most general soul, the most absolute soul. But the point is, there's an individuality. There's this God is a spiritual self. And then, maybe even more importantly, we have the jivas. We have something called jivatma, the individual souls. Um, and what we find reading the Upanishads and elsewhere, is that the Jivatma are the super soul in miniature. Every soul contains a part of the soul of God. So God is spread all over the Jivas in an equal way. That's Paramatma. That's one of the three aspects of God. The second aspect of God is Brahma. And this uh, Prabhupada translates absolute reality. God is everything that is. So you can, you can like put an equal sign between the universe and God. God is everything and everything is God. Whatever reality is, all the facts about the world, all the things in the world, all the laws of nature, all that is the same as God. And this is very strong idea in, in the, the uh, I mentioned it before, the Theravada Buddhism, the kind of Buddhism that moved then to the east, to, to, to the Orient, to, to Asia. And it's also very strong in the Mayaveda philosophy that Prabhupada talks about a lot, the impersonalist. So if we think about Brahma alone, then God has no personality. It's just everything. 
it's all the things in the world, it's all the thoughts in the world, it's all the laws, it's, it's everything, and there's no need for personality. So the Maya Vedas that, that Prabhupada criticizes so often, they are stuck in Brahma, in a Brahma conception. Then finally, the third part of the third aspect of God is called uh, Bhagavan. Bhagavan, which, um, like I said, uh, Prabhupada translates as personality of God. God as personality. God has a shape. God has a form. God has a flow. God is not everywhere equal and 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 the same. There, God has different intensity, different diff different movement. The variations in the way he is, it's changing, it's personal, it's transforming, it's flowing, it's evolving. A personality, just like with human personalities, is never reducible. It's not the same as logic or reason or philosophy. You could even say that personality is what is not rational. Personality is the thing you can't pre predict. Personality is the part that goes through the heart. It's the part that flows in, in, um, in the feelings. Flows through emotions and, and, and moods. It flows through experiences. Personality is the expression of the, of the love in our hearts. So Prabhupada's expression, personality of Godhead, this means God as the lover. God as the lover. The essence of God is to love, to react to the world, to be in association with others, to exchange divine love to exchange prema. And if we look at this understanding of God as a kind of model for who we are, then it helps us to understand how we all need love, we all want love, that we live best when we are loving that we, we want to be the hub of love, if you like. And that, on the other hand, that all suffering comes from a lack of love, a lack of being able to love and a lack of loving. This is the basis of personality, and this is the basis of the personality of Godhead. It's the way we connect to the, to the flow of the universe. It's the way we connect to our guru, to others. Uh, and it comes out when we're in through Sankirtan, through chanting, and it comes out through Parinam. So what all this means, that God has a personality, is that God is governed by something else. If God's personality changes, it hardens and softens, it becomes more intense and, or quicker or slower, it goes in waves. This means it's reacting to something else. It's governed by something else. It's governed by something outside itself. And that thing is the divine love of Radhika. Radhika's love, Radhika's control of prema is the governing force in Krishna's personality. So every time in my mind when Prabhupada talks about personality of Godhead, he's saying there's a there's a place for Radharani and Radharani's energy in Krishna. That his personality is is shaped by his relationship with Radharani. That personality is the place where loving exchange is possible. Personality is that space in Krishna, in God, where 
the Vraj Lila takes place. Personality is that space for divine interaction. And it's a space for nurturing love. That's the place, space of our practice. Our practice in trying to make our hearts more sensible, increase the feeling of love in our hearts. That's all happening inside that personality, that space of personality. Can you put her back in and tell fell out. I hope she didn't bump anything. <laughs> Sorry for the story. No worries. I just had to stop and think. Mm. Huh. Let's see. Right on. There you are, English, Italian. Blub. Okay. Dade, dade. Thanks. So now let's go back to, we finished verse 9.4, but maybe just one more thought on it before going on to 9.5. Prabhupada said in that last, it's actually the last line of 9.4, that I mentioned a moment ago. I'm quoting now. Yet one should not conclude that because he is spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. So since Krishna is Brahma, absolute reality, he's everywhere. He is what exists. He is what is. He is universal. It never changes never varies, it's indifferent, impersonal. But he's not only Brahman, he's also Bhagavan. And so he has a personality. He comes and goes, always seeking Radharani. He comes and goes at the, in, re, in reaction to the love games of Radharani. He changes form and mood. He desires, he, he longs, he's sad, he's, he's frustrated. His heart swells like a wave and his love penetrates like an arrow. This is the Bhagavan part of everything. So it's the Krishna that's Bhagavan that's really interesting for us in, in our practice of bhakti. And when we're reading the book, after all, it's called Bhagavad Gita. It's not called Brahmad Gita. It's called the song of the personality of Godhead, not the song of absolute reality. God is absolute reality. We're reading Bhagavad Gita and not Brahmad Gita. So let's remember that every time we think of it. So here are continuing the, the meditation on what personality means now, here are four um, consequences of Krishna's personality. And these will then go into verse uh, number five that we'll go to in a, in a minute. The first uh, consequence, the first meaning of Krishna's personality is that Krishna is a devotee of Radha. What do I mean? Well, since Krishna is a personality, he's changing and personal and full of feelings and, and evolving emotions. He's transforming, flowing, evolving. What causes these changes, this instability? Well, it's the presence of Radha, Radharani. The energy of Radharani which is pushing and pulling Krishna in all sorts of different directions, searching out and testing all the aspects of divine love by experimenting with all the different aspects of, of what a divine loving relation can be. So when we're reading about the, the Rasa Lila, 
when we're reading in Radha Rasa Sudaniti or Velapa Kusmanjari or other books, what we're seeing presented is the shape of divine love. Each verse of Velapa Kusmanjari paints the picture of another nuance of divine love. Where Radha Radharani is exploring a different way of touching Krishna, a different way of provoking Krishna's desire. So Krishna is always changing in relation to those different approaches that Radharani has. Each one of us is kind of a, a little poem about what divine love actually looks like. And this is how we can understand the personality of God, that it's that space where these different aspects of divine love is, is, is explored, is experimented with. So Krishna is never just fixed, never, never a statue of stone. He's always, he's always split, he's always himself and another. He's always himself, of course, Moan and another, rather. He's a devotee, he's a servant, and he has this, the waves of divine love rising and falling within, in, within him. And that's what introduces the personality of Godhead, and that's what gives us the personality of our, our lives as well. The second meaning of the personality this is my, my thinking, this is my meditation. Of course, it's not, <laughs> it's not Gurudev's or, or anyone else's. It's that there are, in these, we remember there are three aspects of God. Parat, Paramatma, Brahma, and Bhagavan. And we said that Paramatma translates into super soul. And that's because Paramatma, is always relating to jivatma. So the super soul is present in the individual soul. According to Upanishads and many authorities, the super soul is in every jiva soul. So the jivatma, the jiva soul, is a miniature version of the super soul. Our soul, in other words, is made in the image of Krishna's soul. And if that's the case, well, what does that mean? That means that Radharani is in us as well. Just as much as Radharani is in Krishna, as a part of him, she is in, in us. So we, have, we contain that part and parcel of Radharani in our hearts. The tiny little fragment of Radharani is playing out the, the lila also in our hearts, that divine loving energy in a tiny little portion is within us, and our goal is to increase it through our practice, through our association, through our, through our chanting, through our sankirtan, and, and other ways. So that's the second meaning of the personality of Godhead, of Krishna, that there are a bit of Radharani is also in us. A third meaning of the personality of Godhead is about faith. Faith. We talked about faith in, the, I think, the second lesson or the third. We talked a lot about it. And I found out that it's very interesting for every, everyone because many of us feel like our faith is not strong enough. Or we're unsure about our faith. And I said at that time that... Faith is the Hello. presence of that faith is the presence of divine love within us, the presence of prema within in us. It's this little signal, a little beacon that we see in our hearts that makes us understand that there's something more beyond us, that there's something more to evolve toward, that we can grow in our love and grow towards something we don't know yet. That's what faith is. It's this idea that we're imperfect, that, our, that the divine is in us but covered, and we need to work towards 
uncovering it. And then I, I tried to say something, I think, like divine love is not out there in the clouds, not on a mountaintop in the Swiss Alps, that the divine love is inside us. And that self-realization then, self-realization is uncovering it, uncovering what's inside us. The divine love is already planted there by God. That's part of what it is to have a soul. It's to have the trace, the little beacon of divine love inside us. And our path, the path of bhakti, is to make that stronger and stronger and stronger, to find it, to take it, to, to increase it. And we do this by associating with, above all, with guru, by following guru's example, by listening and talking, by associating with others that, are, that uh, have the same beacon beeping inside them, and to help us uncover it. But all along the way, we have that feeling that it's there. And, and I insisted, I think, that we can always see that feeling in us if we just look and, and feel and, and uh, are retro introspective uh, enough. But what's my point is here about personality is that it's this invisible personality of Godhead, which is also finding its place in our heart. We all, we feel that love, we feel the divine, and that is also something of the, the little bit of the personality of Godhead, which is within us. And it's there as kind of an encouragement to go forward, to, to risk to uncover ourselves more, to, to surrender more. So faith, I think, is the consequence of this personality of God. Since God has a personality, and that personality is planted in us, then this gives us the faith we have. The last, the fourth and last idea I wanted to share that I meditated on this week. It really came from the discussion yesterday in, um, in the sharing, international sharing. It was a very, very simple question, but a really important question that someone asked and then there was discussion. And it is, how does Bhav get transmitted from guru to devotee, from devotee to devotee, and so forth. If the meaning of our faith is not reason, not logic, not philosophy, but feeling, bhav, and if the goal then is to increase that, to make it become greater, to make it, to share it with Guru, share it with others and increase it, then how does that happen? How does Bhav pass from one to the other? It doesn't come through words, doesn't come through books. It doesn't come through logic or philosophy, but somehow it's received and it's received, we, all, we often say, through mercy. And I often say, what does that mean? Because <laughs> I find that difficult. But that Bhav becomes, comes through mercy means that others help us to open our hearts to the emotions within us. The error is to think that Bhav is an object, a thing. That Bhav is just something we can again, like prema, that we can just take or, or give. It's something outside us that we, just like we go to the prema shop, we can go to the bhav shop and get it, pay out some money. It's what Guru Dev calls the Amazon model. That we can just give something and we get it back. That you order it online and it comes. 
No, of course, this is foolish. Bhav comes automatically when there is mercy. This is what Guru Kripa means. Not that uh, bo- uh, Guru has a has a a suitcase full of bhav, and he opens the suitcase and gives us some when he, when when he's feeling generous. It means that Guru gives the opening of the heart, which lets the bhav flow that is already there. This is another way that we understand Guru is not the goal. Guru helps us forward towards the goal. Guru helps to open the the flow within us. Guru Kripa means that Guru opens your heart so that you can find the Bhav. By his love, by his example, by, mm, what should I say, by his actions, by the prasad he offers, by the prayers he makes. All these things help to remove the blockages. And the more we surrender to this, the more those blockages are naturally removed. And the naturally occurring bhav, the bhav in us already can find its, can be liberated, if you like. So bhav is not flowing in a pipeline where you turn on the robinet, you turn on or you turn off. It doesn't come in a package where you can click online and get it from Amazon. And it's not even given by kind and loving people, bhav. It's not given. It's it's already there. It's already waiting to be part of your conscious activity. But the kind and loving people can help you soften your heart and find the way to let uh, that out. So this is this. I talk about this as part of personality of God. Because it's God himself who develops bhav in relation with Radha. All these activities, all these activities of the Rasa Lila, they're softening the heart of Mohan. All these activities are making bhav flow. They're increasing the mood of love, higher and higher. So the Radha does not give bhav to Moan, like the Amazon model in the Viraj Lila, but rather that delicate, sensitive play of love, all the different sides of how we can be desired and desire, and all the different sides of how we can be disappointed or frustrated by by love that is what is a, that's our training in bhav that's what helps us understand how to make bhav come out it happens not in material vrindavan though that's a nice place to be uh, it happens in spiritual vrindavan in other words it happens in our in our hearts That's the fourth way that for me, the personality of Godhead is so important and, and meaningful. So I hope that's, that's helpful to understanding verse 9.4. And I think it'll, it'll help us now when we turn briefly to, to verse 9.5. We already started it, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll continue it. And here, if you like, feel free to... Um, feel free to share a couple of messages in the chat, which... Okay. So I'll share my screen here, and you can look at the text yourself.
So verse 9, 5. It's a different version of this strange verse, paradoxical verse that Radha Govinda asked about last week or two weeks ago, I guess, two weeks ago. That seems like a contradiction, but let's look at it when we're in, in, terms, of, in terms of personality. So the, the, the verse is, and yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the man maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, still myself is the very source of creation. So I think we can understand this in the way I just described. I am everything. I am Brahma. I am everywhere. I am Brahma. I am I'm the foundation of all living entities and all things in the universe. That's all Brahma. And yet, myself is the source of creation. There's a creativity, an originality, a personality in the one who creates. So we have in the verse two sides of the same, two aspects of God. The Brahma aspect and the Bhagavan aspect. And then we also talk about self. So in a way, in a way we, um, we also talk about Paramatma. So Krishna creates the universe infinitely everywhere as Brahma. He says elsewhere, like the wind fills the sky, but is not part of it. You remember? He creates the world as Brahma, but then he can be in it in, in his varying forms and ways as Bhagavan. Even God's thought is the universe. So not only the things in the universe are the same as God in terms of Brahma, but also all the feelings and intellectual content, everything that's in the, every thought that can be thought is already God. The existence, the being, the thought, so, so Krishna, just by being, is creating the universe. The self of God, if you like. So it's the self of, of everything. It's not individual at all. It's just God is the universe. It's a very hard idea to, to grasp. We have to open up our, our minds. So God is this entire reality that, that is. But then again, what, if we think of the, the action that's taking place, the activities of God inside that re, uh, universe, we're thinking in terms of the personality, in terms of Bhagavan. In the verse, it's mentioned, behold my mystic opulence. And here, this, the word that um, is mystic opulence is yogamai, or yogam alchavram. You can read it in the, you can see it in the, in the Sanskrit. Before we talked about Maya Shakti, so material energy, and we talked about Jiva Shakti, the energy of each living soul. And now we have a third kind of energy. Krishna has many energies. And of course, one of them is the Prema we've talked about a lot. But this third energy is the Yogam Aichvaram, mysterious energy, the divine mis mysterious energy, if you like, yoga maya. And this is God's all-powerful energy. And Prabhupada translates this as opulence, God's mystical opulence. 
So and when I read the word opulence, I read something that's total, that has cannot be touched, that is so big and perfect and beautiful that there is really no relation to individuals. Something we cannot understand, something we can't even experience um, directly. That's what opulence is. That's what the universe is. We cannot understand the meaning of the universe. And that's why it's called mysterious. And you remember in verse 3, we talked about Raja Guyam, the, the, the king of the secrets, the most secretive thing. And that we said behind that secret is Radharani. So to those jivas that are, that are existing in this universe, we can't understand, we can't simply understand. But those who live in spiritual energy, in Siddhadeya, the universe can be understood. It is visible to them. So this is part of the meaning of the secret. For the material beings, the secret is total. For the spiritual beings, we can have access to understanding some of the secret. And then Prabhupada comments, the Lord says that everything is resting on Him. Say something, my dear. Very good, Gurudev, please. I never listen so beautiful class before that on Bhagavad Gita. Thank you for giving your mercy. Mm. Who is lucky, they will attend your class. And who is not lucky, they will not attend. <laughs> that I want to say. I am waiting for half an hour before to attend your class. <laughs> so kind. I'm, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. You, your kindness and uh, mercy makes it happen, Gurudev. You know that. I'm so happy. I cannot explain. Mm -hmm. You are explaining what I don't know. Wow. Mm -hmm. you. Radhe. Thank you. Thank you, Gurudev. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Little sharing, little вопрос. Of course. Rade, Rade, ты попроси, может быть, это перейди, пожалуйста, чтобы это. Rade, Rade. Ну, давай. Ну, у меня... А как ты сделаешь? Удова, little, little question, little sharing. Да. Рада Чиран, ты в, в этом? Well, Рада Чиран, should I take you out of... Uh, I'll, I'll take you out of uh, Russian and you can uh, translate. Eh? Translate? Okay, we can hear you now, Radha Charan. I think. I hope. Не, ну ты выходи, Радха Чаран, выйди, пожалуйста. Это важно. Радха Чаран, Радха Ираде? Радха Ираде. Радха Чаран, ты здесь в общем чате? No, no, he's still on uh, interpretation, sorry. See. Now, now, okay, now, Radha Charan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let uh, Radha Govinda uh, share, and I will translate. And then, then you again put me in translation canal, or Punya is still okay. in translation canal. 
Рада Гавинда Джи, говори, пожалуйста. Да все, ты здесь, да, в общем чате. Да, 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 да. Сори, сори, баба, сори, баба, махарад. Литл, литл, квестин, литл. Наверное, по частям, да, рада вчера надо. Да, вот лучше по частям. Это, да, вот это могущество, да, как бы Кришны. И я хотел бы добавить, то есть мы же знаем, да, вот я переспрашиваю утхов, ну то есть я дальше как бы потом расскажу, что ведь э, он творит, да, вот, вот этот, как э, вот эту энергию, да, как он говорил, йога маю, да, или он же ее оплодотворяет взглядом любви на нее, да, вот этой энергии, материальный космос, да, и вот этот взгляд, и вот эти дживы, да, они как бы пронизывают, да, он нами, как любовью, пропитывает это, да, вот это творение. Um, Radagavinda is telling what uh, it's written in this verse about mystic opulence. It's like um, loving uh, glance towards Srimati Radhika and uh, this, in this, I, I maybe not understand him correctly, and he is uh, putting us jivas in the world by this uh, loving glance and make this uh, world is alive. He's continuing. Да, продолжай, Рада Гринджи. Yes, Утхова. Yes. И вот смотри, то есть, а он смотрит, да, на, ну, Кришна, Гавинда, да, вот как Бхагаван, мы как, да, мы преданные Рагану, Рагануга Бхакти, да, мы mm. вайш, вайшнавы, мы идем путем Бхагавана, да, и вот если смотреть, что это Кришна, да, это Кришна, ну, в какой-то форме, да, там, Вишну или четырьюхи, да, он когда посмотрит обычно вот на эту энергию, да, а это же, да, он ее также и любит, да, это вот это mm -hmm. Юга Но смотри, вот этот взгляд, как... uh, ты пропал, Рада Гавинда Джи. He is telling, maybe it's not Гавинда uh, uh, itself, it's a ты пропал немножко, я хочу перевести то, что я услышал. То есть, it can be not Krishna directly, it's maybe Mahavishnu. He is looking in his energy and make universe alive by these souls. These souls, plan of his, or his feeling, his feeling of love towards this energy. Пожалуйста, дальше. Okay, I put you back on. Uh, I put you back on translate, yeah? He 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 he's he's not uh, finished yet. Udo, sorry. Okay, go if ahead. You... Sorry. Да, продолжай, пожалуйста, Радогавинич. No, it's very good. Go ahead, please. Uh, he he's not asked question yet. Uh, he's just preparing. Okay. okay. He thought it's question sharing, like his. Yes, yes, his yes. Sorry. Very good. Radhagarina Ji, пожалуйста, продолжи дальше. Ты говорил о том, что меня натолкнуло, да, вот то, что я слушал, да, вот. Да, 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 я помню. Взгляд. И вот Кришна, да, теляет, да, да, Радачаран, сам ты понял? Да? То есть взглядом он как жив, вот этими взгляд этот живы, джива татва, да, вот полными искрами он усиляет. И в то же время его взгляд это же взгляд Радхики, у него сознание это, да, сознание Кришны это рада. То есть получается, что мы вот этот взгляд любви, мы вот эту вселенную материальную, мы населяем, да? то есть Кришна, Бхагаван, он населяет нас. Наши природа, да, никакому не Богавану, кратхики. Мы, мы ее, мы взгляд Кришны. Ну, а, я должен перевести эту часть. Да, давай. Он объяснил further, uh, what this glance of uh, Maharish means uh, Govinda, this glance of love, it's actually feelings of Shrimati Radhika in himself. And this glance of love of Shrimati Radhika, and we, Small particles in this inside of a glance makes this uh, universe alive. Продолжай, пожалуйста. Hmm. Okay, now I put interpretation back on. 
Радагавинаджи, он спрашивает, ты завершил? Окей. Very good. First, thank you, that, uh, Radha Govinda Baba. Very, very nice, very nice question. Uh, it, it creates a question for me, but um, but I also have an answer. The one question for me is that uh, there's nothing in the verse that talks about a glance. There's nothing that talks about seeing. Um, there's there's this opulence. And then there's self. And what I understand is that the opulence means that um, Radharani is completely invisible. This is the Bra Brahma dimension, the Brahma aspect. That the, 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 the presence of Radharani is completely secret. And that there can be no, there can be no loving relation in that Brahma aspect. But then in the verse where it talks about still myself is the source of creation, this self contains the personality. The self is the, the visible presence of Radharani. So the, 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 the source of that creation is something which to us jivas also contains the divine love and we can feel that and see it and experience it. This is my this is my understanding. Don't know. No other question, okay? Um, so then please, uh, you're very welcome to share or question or, or comment as you, as you like, as you are all along. It's, there's no need for me to just talk. Actually, very much of this verse and the purport to this verse, five, is about this problem, is about this question. So we only get a, we only advance a little bit in the in the purport, but we'll read it nonetheless. I think it's mostly about this question of Brahma versus Bhagavan. Brahma is this complete, total creation of the universe, and then the personality which carries out, which exposes the loving uh, presence of God and the presence of Radharani within the creation. So we'll continue if there are no other um, questions, and we'll continue a little bit uh, before stopping. Let's see, we had... Yeah, so then Prabhupada comments in the purport. The Lord says that everything is resting on him. <clears throat> This should not be understood, mi sorry, misunderstood. This should not be misunderstood, he says. The Lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance and sustenance of this material manifestation. So on the one hand, Krishna and the universe are the same. Everything that is, is Krishna. And this includes both spiritual and material worlds. All the material beings, all the jivas, all the laws of nature, all the emotions, everything, everything, including love, including prema. That's part of the creation. But in this form, we don't see it appear to us. We don't experience the loving relation. We don't have a chance to look into the kunj and see what's what the loving exchange, the exchange of divine love can be. And then Prabhupada continues in the same way. 
sometimes we see a picture of Atlas. This is from the Greek mythology. Holding the globe on his shoulders. He seems to be very tired. Holding this great earthly planet. Such an image should not be entertained. In other words, such an image is not possible in connection with Krishna upholding the created universe. So I turn off the screen because I have to use my hands. That it's not uh, <laughs> when Krishna is holding the universe, he's not holding it in his hands, he's holding it spiritually. So for Atlas, for the god of the Greek system, the world is there, and Atlas is here, and Atlas holds the world. For Krishna in the Vedic system, Krishna already is the world. There's nothing to hold up. He has only to be. Only to be and only to be um, himself. And in the same sense, he only has to be himself in order to make divine love be possible in in the world and the world will find its equilibrium just in uh, by being uh, by being krishna there's nothing to balance externally like atlas would have to balance the world and make sure everything is fine krishna is already balanced krishna is already balanced by the love of radharani within him and to the degree that that comes out we are able to uh, experience it. And we continue a couple more lines. He says, Krishna says, that although everything is resting on him, he is aloof. He is indifferent. He's at a distance. He doesn't, he's not concerned. He's not worried. He, um, the planetary systems, excuse me, are floating in space. And this space is the energy of the Supreme Lord. But he is different from the space. So Krishna's existence makes space possible, but he is not the space. He is differently situated, says Prabhupada. Therefore, the Lord says, although they are situated on my inconceivable energy, still as Supreme Personality of Godhead, I am aloof from them. This is the inconceivable opulence of the Lord. Once again, we cannot see, we cannot understand what God is, but the truth that um, hides behind the opulence of Krishna will become visible through uh, the, the, the Bhagavan aspect, through Krishna being a personality, through Krishna participating in his relationship with the the energy of divine love. And this can be visible to us, again, in our spiritual form, but not in our material form. Prabhupada continues, the Vedic dictionary, it is said, in the Vedic dictionary, it is said, the Supreme Lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes, displaying his energy. His person is full of different potent energies, and his determination is itself actual fact. In this way, the personality of Godhead is to be understood. This is a really beautiful and, and strange commentary by Prabhupada. It, I try to explain the best I can explain. It says that 
within the entire creation, also the personality of Godhead exists. So part of this perfect, absolute creation is the energy of divine love, is the existence of Radharani. So that, that the universe exists also implies that personality exists, and if personality exists, then we have the possibility of Rasalila, we have the possibility of the meeting with Radharani, we have the possibility of the appearance of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we have the, the possibility of, of Radha Mohan as this experience of, of divine loving. In other words, this behind, the secret behind this perfect, opulent universe is the energy the, of divine love and of the divine loving uh, relation. So reading about, to, to, to quote Prabhupada, reading about, hearing about the Amrish pastimes, as we do so, so often in our, in our association with Gurudev, reading about it, hearing about it, also as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs us in his, in his, in his teaching, it means hearing about the shape of the universe. When we learn about the depths of the divine love in the universe, we learn about what the universe is. By studying Krishna as Bhagavan, as someone with divine personality, loving personality, we're understanding Krishna as Brahma. We're understanding the secret behind the absolute reality. In other words, the divine love is the fundamental secret of the existing reality. By hearing the pastimes, we hear about what the world really is. It's not like there's a world out there and then there's the pastimes as something specific and interesting to look at. It's the pastimes which are the reality. So the divine love, the divine lila, the Vraj Leela is the heart of reality itself. And that's why we want to get as close to it as we possibly can. Um, the purports, we can continue with the purports. Sorry, I'll put it back. Read again this line of Prabhupada. Okay. And what the word explain again? It says in the Vedic dictionary, it is said the Supreme Lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes. His energy, displaying his energy. His person is full of different potent energies, and his determination is itself actual fact. In this way, the personality of Godhead is to be understood. So here in this, this is a quotation from a different book that Prabhupada is bringing, and it's saying, it's saying that the personality of Godhead, this aspect of God that involves the loving relation, that involves the energy of Radharani, this aspect of God is actual fact. Yeah. It's the actual... Go ahead, Gurudev. Very nice. Mm. Ah. Mm. Wow. So the actual reality is this loving relation, this loving energy. It's not something superficial or extra or outside. It's the real thing. It's what the universe is. That's what I mean to say.
Then Prabhupada continues, we may think to do something, but there are so many impediments. And sometimes it is not possible to do as we like. And here, I can only think personally, I'm speaking for myself, I can only understand that Prabhupada is referring to the blockages that keep us separated from divine love, from the flow of the divine, from the flow of uh, Manjari Bhav. These are the impediments. These are the things that uh, make it not possible to do as, as we like. But he continues, when Krishna wants to do something, simply by his willing, everything is performed so perfectly that one cannot imagine how it is being done. Whatever Krishna wants, it becomes reality. And he wants nothing that is not, that is not completely identical to, to him. There's no difference between, in other words, there's no difference between what he is and what he wants. And Prabhupada continues, the Lord explains this fact in the following way. Although he is the maintainer and sustainer of all material manifestation, he does not touch this material manifestation. Simply by his supreme will, everything is created. Everything is sustained. Everything is maintained. Everything is annihilated. There is no difference between his mind and himself, as there is a difference between ourselves and our present material mind. Because he is absolute spirit. Simultaneously, the Lord is present in everything. Yet the common man cannot understand how he is also present personally. And the common man is the one has not set on, has not engaged in bhakti. Because understanding devotional service is opening the door to understanding how Krishna is personally. So the common man, the one who has no loving relation in his or her heart, sees only the opulence, sees only the creation and thinks, ah, there is God. Stop. But the one who has opened the heart on the devotional path sees the universe and says, oh, there is love. There is the hand of Radharani. So it's the same universe, but we see it with different eyes. The, the person without the instinct of devotional love sees a thing, and the person on a devotional path feels an emotion, feels, sees the universe as a loving relation. Prabhupada continues and will conclude. He, Krishna, is different from his material manifestation. Yet, everything is resting on him. This is explained as Yogam Achvaram, the mystic power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Those who have devotional love in their hearts see this as the secret of the energy of Radharani, and those who do not see it simply as 
as the the opulence of the of the whole creation, which is absolutely quite impressive, but it's not the infinity of the experience of of divine love. Ah, and then a question in the chat. So a commoner has not the full presence of the divine mercy. That is exactly what I would say. That's what I would say. Divya Prem. If I've understood correctly, then you have to. Radhe, Radhe. Very clear. Oh, Crystal good. Clear. Radhe, Radhe. Any last Crystal. words from anyone? All right. Thank you, Radhe, Radhe Charan, for your service. I know it's a very difficult job. Nice to see your lovely faces, and I look forward to seeing you next next week. Rade, rade. Oh, a little question. More huh? little, little question. Rade Chiran, выйди, пожалуйста. Ну, опять в этот. У меня okay. надо... А ты минуту. Okay. Rade, Sorry, Baba. Little да, я вышел уже. Он просит маленький. He is asking small question. Да, вот этот момент, когда да, он и, наход, и находится в ней, и в тот момент, когда он не находится. Да, ведь ну, если мы представим его как личность, о, вернее, как личность, ну то есть у меня маленький вопрос, как у маленьких самых... Где он находится как личность? Рада Тиран ловил. Нет, я понял, что когда он одновременно и присутствует во Вселенной, и не присутствует. Можешь еще раз? Я что-то не понял. I'm just trying to understand him. Sorry, Udo. Okay. I'm asking him to repeat again his question. Пожалуйста, еще раз. Можешь спросить? Давай, давай, Радачера. Смотри. Вот э, мы по тексту, да, по Бхагавадгите, да, вот последний, там, что он как бы присутствует во всем и не присутствует. И вот у меня, э, да, ну, э, переводи. Я, я переведу. According to this verse 5, Krishna is uh, simultaneously, he is everywhere, and in the same time he is not present. Да. Да. И вот, вот этот момент, знаешь, когда он как бы и, во, и, и все находится в нем, и не в нем, да, и вот тот момент, когда он еще не находится, и не в нем, да, он же говорит, все покоится на мне, но я вне всего. И вот этот момент, у меня вопрос есть такой по-русски, Рада Чиран, где он в этот момент находится, как личность, да, Кришна? Uh, хорошо, окей, okay, окей. Okay. Uh, actually, his question very simple. He's asking, in that moment, when he's everywhere, but in the same time, out of his uh, creation, Where is he personally in this moment? This is the moment when he's revealing himself in the hearts of the jiva. This is when the divine love, the, the spark of the divine love makes itself seen in the jiva. When he's no longer just, when the universe is no longer just opulence and it becomes li lived. The universe becomes lived. This is when This is the moment when uh, Krishna reveals himself as Bhagavan. So it's in you, Radha Govinda. In you. Он он в тебе, Радха Говинда. То есть в этот момент он в тебе. Если вкратце, как сказал только что, он в тебе. То есть он проявляется в живых в этот момент. Now Radha Govinda is frozen, but at least he's smiling frozen. Oh, there. Картинка Радха Говинда застыла, улыбающимся. All right, thank you again, everyone. I hope to see you soon. Stay in touch. Thank you Take very those. much, Udava, for sharing. Yeah. I feel yeah. so lucky. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too.